welcome, welcome everyone. And obviously, welcome Jason Sloan. How are you? How are things over there? Uh, it's smoky in Colorado. I'm ready to head back to Mexico. <laughs> I'm sure you are. We miss you out here. Well, today, and I say this every week, because every week, every guest that we bring is a very special treat for our viewers. And today, we have Danny Kroll with Envirospec. Hi, Danny. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you very much for having me on the show. I'm really excited to be here. Oh, we are so excited to have you. Mm -hmm. And to start off, the first thing that I want to ensure that our viewers see is a little video that we have prepared here. Let me go ahead and add that now. Sounds so, great. Let's start there. How about that? Cool. Excellent. Okay. So in the midst of this wonderful and very informative video, can you tell us a little bit about the product and how it got started, how it came to be? Give us a little bit of an overview on it. Sure. Yeah, basically the, 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 the PayPal pedestals, uh, as you saw from the video, mm -hmm. um, they are made to support paving stones when you're creating a patio on a flat roof. And what they do is they hold in place the, the, the paving stones, they raise them up and allow perfect drainage so the water can drain through the roof. And at the same time, it's protecting the membrane and any insulation that's in there, uh, protects it from the elements and creates a beautiful patio. So it's very popular now um, amongst the condominiums and restaurants and things like that that they're putting up on rooftops. Even some old, older buildings, they're converting the rooftops to be able to make use of the space. And now with COVID, or hopefully we're getting away from COVID, but COVID has you know, made people want to make more use of their private spaces and have places to go. Um, basically, I'll tell you a little bit about the history of the product. Um, okay. it is that So back in 1979, an engineer named Robert DeClute uh, basically had a solution for a problem that was what was happening is that on rooftops they would have as today they have equipment up there usually HVAC equipment sometimes different types of equipment and they'd install it on the rooftop they'd finish the rooftop usually you know some while they, when they're building the building and everything's great until they have to change that equipment and what would happen is they would walk along the rooftop and and same thing they carry this or sliding this large heavy uh hvac equipment across the roof and that would ultimately often damage the rooftop so the the solution was to create a walkway with paving stones usually just one paving stone wide which are normally two by two although they do come in different sizes mm -hmm. and they make a walkway and then you know every 10 20 years when they need to do something major with the equipment they could just roll it across that and uh, uh, get the equipment in, in and out without damaging the roof. So it was just a walkway that he invented this product. And what 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 happened? What, what one of the main uh, 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 things about it, as I mentioned, is the drainage. That you want to have an area that the water can drain freely. That it's not going to pile up. You know, if you just put a, a paving stone flat on a rooftop, water would go up against the edge and just sit there and wouldn't flow freely to the drains on the rooftop and that as all the roofers listening know that creates a major problem as well water can get underneath if you're in a climate like jason is and myself that has freezing temperatures in the winter the water freezes and then the tile ends up moving and sometimes right. they would use like, like a, a crushed uh, uh 
crushed rock. And same thing, when the, the, it freezes, it moves around, um, as well as water would form on top of the paving stone and freeze. Someone's walking, they slip. So this avoids all those things. It was just invented to create a walkway to the equipment on the rooftops and the different areas that the, and sometimes different areas that the, the people that need to work on the roof uh, need to get to. It has evolved to creating full patios. And again, like I say, it's used um, you know, for rooftops, for large restaurants, for condominiums, townhouses, private homes. Uh, those are the main uses that, it, that it's used for now. And uh, yeah, so basically it's become quite a, quite, quite a, a popular thing to have a, a patio on the rooftop. And nowadays there's some beautiful choices. You don't just need, I mean, the, the, the paving stones that are two by two made out of concrete are still quite nice, but there's also lots of nice choices um, porcelain choices and different choices with different patterns that look like some that look like wood, some that look like, you know, all di different designer stuff. There's all kinds of beautiful stuff that's available nowadays. So basically it's a good way to make use of, uh, of, your, of your rooftop space, either on a new, new project or an existing project. And, uh, and again, so a great way to enjoy the outdoors and some of the rooftops, uh, as you probably saw from the video, um, uh, you know, some of the rooftops are, are quite beautiful places, especially overlooking some beautiful cities and things like that. And, uh, um, yeah, so the, the, our, our, the product, the Pavel pedestal is a really easy way to, uh, to, it, to get a patio on your rooftop and save, uh, uh, cost. It's a very low cost solution. So yeah, there, there's a photograph of a simple rooftop patio mm -hmm. and, um, Wow. There's, a, there's another one and you can see the spaces between the tiles there's actually um on the actual paving on the actual pedestals there mm -hmm. is uh, a spacer tab so a piece that lit, raises up and that's the piece that that keeps the paving stones separated by that space the one that i'm holding right now and jason has the spacer is only one eighth of an inch so it okay. looks really modern you're not going to get a a high heel or anything stuck between them. You're not going to catch an edge. You know, if someone's walking, and uh, uh, yeah. So basically, that that's that that's the product. Um, I can tell you more more about it um, in terms of you know some of the advantages. As I mentioned, it's a low cost solution. It's also really easy to install. Um, in, in you know, especially compared to other products. That do similar things that that's a photograph of, of, of a few pedestals stacked up because mm -hmm. you can raise it to different, different heights both to meet up with if you need to get to a certain height to meet up with a certain wa a walkway or doorway or mm -hmm. we also have the ability to correct the slope as we all know flat roofs have a slope so you get drainage so the water runs off and uh so you can raise up once one corner higher than the other to again make a perfectly flat uh, patio, patio, and we can correct slopes up to five percent. Jason's holding what's called a, uh, a a leveling plate. So those are one eighth of an inch thick, and those go on top of the pedestals for the fine adjustments. And as mm -hmm. you can see, they also break apart into four pieces. So let's say you've got an, an imperfect paving stone, and you only needed one. You, you could use just a portion of the just one one corner. Could be raised up and the others could be at the same at the same height so it comes in really handy when you're making fine adjustments and mm -hmm. uh um yeah and, and basically we've been making this product for over 40 years without a single product failure um we, we have a 20-year warranty right now so which is the best in the industry and uh it really like like i say really is great for a, a simple solution for creating uh, beautiful patios on flat roofs. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm also seeing a picture on your website where you guys are just using it as far as to hold up the um, the split. Um, I'm sorry, Colleen. So I have there's a picture that I'm seeing on the website here. Let me um, quick, let me share my sure. The picture that I was showing just there just showed how what. How it basically you'd have a paving stone on each corner, of course. Yeah. That was just showing one. one yeah. Point, one so what corner. I'm seeing here is you guys also some applications for it is to just hold up, you know, AC splits, stuff like that. Yeah, basically. 
your pitch pans. And yeah, everything. basically. Basically, they can create the patio. It's strong enough that it can support equipment. Uh, we've got different. We've got four different size pedestals. So depending on what surface is going underneath and what and what they actually are putting on top, you would choose which which uh, pedestal to use. But we can support. Uh, you know, make a patio, and they can put the the uh, the, the equipment right on top of it. Um, that shows how they're supporting each corner. Uh, the picture that's showing there on the on the right. Uh, the, obviously, you know, there would be a, a more more paving stones added to that photograph, but that's showing how it's how it's being assembled. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, yeah, this looks great. And the right here's mm -hmm. a full AC unit. It's not even the just the splits. So this is a more heavy yeah. duty one. And there's yeah, some the, the stuff duty attached to the roof and other stuff attached on top. So. Yeah, we they can so some of the pedestals can can support like the uh, I think close to two thousand pounds each pedestal, and it's also used. I, I didn't mention it before, but for water parks, you can see there's a water park there uh, in Tampa, Florida. They just made a big order for a water park that they're building down there. Um, I've got a, a builder. I, I just going to mention I have a builder that works in the Hamptons in uh, in you know Long Island, New York, and he builds homes for multimillionaires. And around the pools, he likes to use my products. So what he does is the coping comes up a little bit. Basically, the coping comes up, and then he pours a slab about an inch below, and then or I guess two two inches, part of me, uh, because to make room for the paving stone and the pedestal, and then it'll match right up with the uh, with the the coping of the swimming pool. And then especially you can choose these porcelain tiles; they're beautiful. I got a lot of friends that have got some beautiful pools, but they just have a poured concrete pad around it, polished concrete. But inevitably what happens is it ends up cracking or they end up getting stained by leaves and things like that. And uh, with the paving stone, you just pop it right out and you can pop another one in. I uh, opposed to having to, you know, get a, get a re-pour everything and, and remove it. And same thing with cleaning. They, they, they do self-clean, but sometimes you might get some leaves and stuff like that that goes underneath. You just lift up the paving stone, pull it out, no problem, and, and away and away you go. So I'm looking real quick, and the pedestals will go up to eight inches. Do you have any product? Oh, there it is. <laughs> you have the screw. I was waiting for the great time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. so basically, before this product was invented. Um, they use something called a screw jack. And if you go down a little bit, you'll be able to actually see one. You scroll down a little bit in the picture on, on the right side. Right here. You'll see the yeah. two products. So the one on the left is the Pavel pedestal, which we manufacture. Mm -hmm. The one on the right is called the screw jack. And they're they're quite expensive. They're, you know, about 40, 50 bucks. They come in sometimes in a box of, you know, three different four, or four, even up to five different pieces you need to assemble. It's basically a very complicated solution. Um, and, and now, if you are building a patio, sometimes they do need to raise them up like a foot or two feet even. And if you're doing that, I suggest that they, they use a screw jack. That is the best solution. But if you're doing a low rise patio, this is a lot cheaper, much simpler uh, installation. I mean, we could go through it a little bit, but basically with the, the screw jacks, you need special tools to adjust it. You need to use a laser for, for leveling it. It's a much more complicated installation. Our installation, you just put it down. You need to stack them. You stack them or use a leveling plate. You pop that on top and away you go. Um, and if you're working on a rooftop, I'm sure you can imagine if you had to assemble five different boxes for each one. And then, you know, it's just a complicated thing to get the product in the right place on the rooftop. It takes a lot of time. And, uh, uh, and, and basically, like I say, it really is a more expensive overcomplicated solution for most for most applications and and I, well, I did mention already really the biggest thing is the cost and our product is is manufactured in north america it's made in canada uh, we've got no supply chain issues uh, we've got inventory located in the east coast and west coast uh, both canada and us so we actually have a, a warehouse in colorado not too far from where jason's sitting right now and we also have a, a warehouse in Western New York, so we can ship very easy, easily product. We've got lots of inventory. And um, 
as I mentioned, we can, you know, just looking at the, at the, uh, um, the, what, what you have on the screen there, um, we can, you know, we can, we can, um, uh, correct the slope up to 5%, no problem. Um, it's been used for over 40 years without a single product failure. And, uh, like, so basically this is a, a simpler, more cost effective solution than the screw jacks. And, um, it's very, it's very strong. So there are some other products out there that, that are foam that sort of compress and your patio is going to move around. They don't have the same drainage as this. If you look at, if you look Jason closely at the, the pedestal, I sent you some samples earlier in the week. You okay. can see the actual, there's holes all through it. There's no way water is going to sit in, inside there at any play at any time. And, uh, it's quite interesting the way that it, the way that it's been engineered. You can see yeah, as I'm holding got, it. It looks like you got holes at the bottom, and you also have weep holes all over the sides too. So it's not going to hold yeah. that. And then with the levelers, you you got all that. You have the, the holes in those too. So yeah, people people sometimes think these are pieces of chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> they do look like. And just to give you an idea, if you don't mind, just putting my screen back up again. Um, this oh, is yeah, a small course. one. This is a small one, so it's about it's about five and three quarters of an inch by five, five and three quarters. Oh, it's less than that. Um, but anyways, it's about four inches, four by four. And just to give you an idea, this is one of our larger ones. This is a, uh, I think it's seven inches, and this is the seven. It's called. So we've got all different sizes. There, there's four different sizes, and as I mentioned, you choose which size based on uh, based on uh, what you're putting on top and what the surface is, is underneath. Uh, and is that one thing something I wanted... that you guys can assist them with? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, same thing with uh, estimating. Um, you know, I'm more than happy to provide estimates. We, we, we have engineers available that can review plans. Um, we can read blueprints. We can assist with the estimating. We can put together a plan, how the inst you know, explaining how the install goes. Uh, we certainly provide a lot of hands-on um, uh, uh, service. And... Uh, I, it, it's it's kind of interesting because uh, because each pedestal supports four pavings uh, like four corners of a paving stone. You basically figure out how many paving stones you're going to use, and that's the same number of pedestal locations. So um, you know if you're let's say at a thousand square foot patio, obviously it's a smaller one. Um, Paving stones, you've got to find out the paving stone size that they're using. If it's two by two, so that's four square feet. Divide a thousand by four square, square feet gives you 250. So it's 250 location or 250 pedestals. I'm sorry, 250 paving stones, which also is 250 pedestal locations. So that's not talking about correcting for the slope at that point. In some installations, they only have a 2% slope. Sometimes they, even, they don't even correct it. And to be honest, mo most of the time, we can't even notice it unless you're in a wheelchair, we do hospitals. So we have to, uh, uh, quite often, so we have to keep in mind that if you're in a wheelchair, you're gonna feel the slope, of course. And those ones, we, for sure, we have to correct the slope on. But a lot of times, especially with just uh, people going up there to you know, check on the equipment, or uh, even for some you know, con condominiums and townhouses, they'll just maintain the slope, don't even notice it. Same thing, it's one pedestal per paving stone. Just to continue about estimating, um, I also recommend that they add 10% to that number because you may have to cut a row, you know, it's because it, the two by two might not fit in perfectly. And if you cut a row, then you got more paving stones, you need more pedestals. Hmm. So yeah, that's, that's basically how the insulation works. And as I mentioned, we can, we can uh, assist with any estimating and, and help with uh, getting a project going. And we regularly, basically the pro the, a lot of times, this product is specified by architects in the blueprints. So we get con calls from contractors and roofers that are doing the install and they're like, hey, you guys were specified. Can you help us to estimate this? So I spend the time to make sure that uh, we get a good estimate out there. I help them to become competitive. I provide some discounts based on the job size. And uh, so that, that's that, those are some of the functions that we have here. And, and and I want to mention this: the the people that the the people that are uh, listening to this, if they're roofers, they can take advantage of this show by you know get in touch with me, 
And if they have any individual projects that they're working on, uh, a lot of times roofers get a call. Hey, we want to, even for balconies on condominiums, you know, it's so much nicer than the, than the, than the uh, concrete, put down some paving stones there. But they get calls for different projects. Obviously, they can buy directly from me. They also may, get, may be getting, uh, and especially uh, in the next couple of years, uh, there's a good chance that they're going to be getting some jobs where we're already specified on the on the project because what happened is uh, in the last two years we've been literally like each month uh, specified on hundreds of projects and it takes sometimes a few years for those projects to come to fruition but if it comes across someone's desk like I say they they can buy the product directly from from us we they can put a a, a decent sized markup in there as well as get the job uh, you know with the the labor of course. So it can be advantageous in that way. And some people, we I have some local guys and some guys as well in the US where they're known for doing these type of installs. And believe you me, some of these guys, they would much rather do, you know, putting down uh, pedestals and paving stones rather than, you know, pouring some of the hot, uh, hot roofing materials that they're using and installing. They tell me this is a much easier install. And, uh, and actually, just coming back to the screw jacks, as I mentioned, it's easier to install. That guy that I have get, that does the, the pools down in the Hamptons, he gave me a quote recently where he said, you know what, Danny, your, your product is a lot cheaper for us to install. But even if it was more expensive, then, and, and he's come, he used to use the, the, the screw jacks uh, for his pools. And he said, you know what, Danny, not only is it uh, a less expensive, but it, my installers just love using it. It's so much easier than, than the screw jacks. So um, there's that image as well. It's a pretty easy job uh, compared to some of the difficult stuff that the roofers do. And it's almost like a little bit for them. And as I mentioned, they usually end up uh, using less time than they a lot for the project. You can go home early, spend time with the family or whatever, or go to another job, whatever, the, whatever they want to do. Yeah. So, I um, mean, you talked about distribution in North America. What about if somebody has a project in another part of the world? Great question. As a matter of fact, uh, I sent a quote this morning to a project that's located in Kuwait. And I got this email about, about a week ago. We've, I've conversed back and forth with the engineers over there. And when I first saw it, actually, I was kind of skeptical because I've never dealt with Kuwait. I wasn't even sure. You know, I know, first of all, we're in Canada where I feel like, and I've got relatives in the U.S. I go to the U.S. all the time. I love the U.S. Um, I feel like, you know, we're basically relatives, of course. <laughs> and I know I know about the Kuwait War a few years ago. So I'm like, are we even allowed to ship to Kuwait? Like, I honestly had no idea. So, uh, and, I, and I thought this has got to be a scam. Because as you know, anybody that has a website that sells product, there's people from all over the world that are contacting them with scam stuff. Um, you know, I can tell you, I tell you a funny story. I know the show kind of is about telling stories as well. I'll tell you a quick story that this customer contacted me and they said they wanted to buy like about three thousand dollars worth of uh, three thousand dollars U.S. worth of uh, pedestals to go to Puerto Rico, and they wanted me to ship it to Puerto Rico. They wanted me to use their shipping company, and their shipping company it seemed was extremely uh, exorbitantly priced. So it was like, you know. Make You're cutting out, Danny. Shipment from uh, Puerto Rico. My back? Yeah, Can you hear back. Me? I think so. Yeah, there we go. Sorry about that. So, so, anyways, he wanted me to pay for the shipping. On my, we pay for the shipping and he would reimburse me. And the shipping was like $5,000 to go down to Puerto Rico. So, and then I looked up his address. He was going to pay me with a credit card. The credit card was, was authorized, but was out of Albany, New York. So he says, oh, yeah, I got a home in, in Albany, New York. I look it up on Google Maps, and it's an office building. So it's like there was some, I knew there was something wrong there. So anyways, this Kuwait one that came through, I was kind of skeptical about it. They ended up sending me over the blueprints and showed me that our, 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 our product is, is contained within the, the blueprints and was actually integrated into the project, and it seems like it's real. So I got a shipping quote, when to, to ship product through by boat and take two months to get there. Another one to ship it by, by, by airplane. And so, and then, uh, you know, the, we, we have sent product all over the world. Uh, the previous, previous owners, um, they had a, an order 
uh, about three quarters of a million dollars to Philippines about uh, four years ago. So okay. definitely used and, 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 and can go all over the world. It's a great product. And I've got some friends in different places all around the world that are, uh, you know, that are, that are basically spreading the word. I've got a good friend of mine that's involved in, in, in the building industry in Spain and uh, another guy in Dubai. And they both have some people that are interested in the product. But we'll see what happens. Most importantly, um, you know, I want to focus on the U.S. and Canada. U.S. is a huge market that we haven't really penetrated too much. Um, you know, basically, I was going to tell you a little bit about how, how I got involved with the company. And that sort of will explain a little bit about the history of the company and where it's going. Perfect. So, so it's kind of a funny story, actually, I'll tell you. Is that my, so my, I've, I've got kids. I'm very involved with my family. The two most important things to me are family and, and, and sports. <laughs> uh, so we're involved. <laughs> we're involved. You know, we all play hockey and softball. I just had a game last night. I got a tournament this weekend for myself. My kids play play competitive hockey and competitive softball. Although because of COVID, they actually didn't have softball this year or last year, unfortunately. But anyways, one of my daughters, her, she has a co-worker, I've shot a, a teammate, and I'm friends with her dad. And uh, uh, basically, I was involved with another business doing some finance, um, some mortgages and stuff. And I was kind of sick of the business. And I was talking to him. And he's an accountant. He sells businesses. That's what he does for a living. So I was just talking to him about something else. And I said to him, you know, I'm sick of this stuff that I'm doing. I, I hate dealing with this, you know, this the finance mortgages and stuff. I said, you got any businesses for sale? And he says, as a matter of fact, I have this one business. They're manufacturing these pedestals for rooftops. It's a rooftop construction product. And uh, he actually was considering to uh, get involved with it because it seemed like such a great business, such an interesting business. So he told me about it. One thing led to the next. I ended up meeting with the with the owners with, that were at this thing. Now they're retired senior citizens. Um, the the uh, yeah, basically they're older. And when it, when I got involved with the company, the website was very outdated. They would, didn't have the product really listed in places that the architects could get it readily on the, on an electronic level. So we we basically put it on something called CAD Details. We put it up, which is uh, a website that. Uh, a company that basically takes all the information about our product and puts it in like five or six different languages that architects speak, like BIM is one and Revit. And I don't know how much up to date you are with that stuff, um, but basically different programs that architects can design buildings with. So they have these tools available that they can just grab the pedestal from over here and pull it in and put it into the plans and everything in integrates. And then, as I mentioned, once it comes time for them to actually build the building, then they, um, then it's already there. And as I mentioned, it goes to a tender or the contractor and he'll contact us and purchase it directly. So last couple of years, because we've listed it in the right places there, again, uh, if there's anybody that's on the call and maybe you guys are familiar at all with, with the specifying um, aspect of, of, of building planning and, 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 and design, um, but basically, the, the, we previously were on the oldest um, listing place for specifications, which is a company called RCAT. And RCAT used to have these books that they would give to architects. And every year they'd get a book and they'd have to look and they'd copy and, you know, take parts of it and type it into their, their uh, if they were using typewriters or whatever. I don't know what they were using back then. And anyways, we're still on RCAT. RCAT is now, now online. And we're also on uh, something called BDS Speclink and a few few other places um, where the architects go. And the architects also, it's kind of interesting aspect of this company is I had to figure out how the architects think in order to get them to put our product into their designs. Mm -hmm. So I spent a lot of time and they're really different people than, I guess the roofers in some ways are different people as well, uh, but the architects, um, you know, they, they work in a really nice office. A lot of them, you know, do well. They sort of, they're almost like hermits. They, uh, you know, work in a cocoon type atmosphere and they want things a certain way. They, they really are particular the way that they want things. So we made sure to create the material um, in a way that they like it. And we found, and as I mentioned, we've been getting the results. We get reports from these companies that you know, literally each month we're put into hundreds and hundreds of projects, and these projects 
as I mentioned, are going to go to tender at some point. And some of the roofers that are listening right now may get these projects and they can buy the product from us, uh, mark it up and install it and create a relationship with us that they're familiar with it. And uh, I think over the next few years, we're going to really see a huge increase, especially in our particular product, the Paybell pedestal made by EnviroSpec. So it's, I think it's a guys, great opportunity. Do you guys plan on, since you're growing, getting into going to trade shows and so forth as well? Yeah. Yeah. So we started, uh, uh, you know, the, the previous owners went to trade shows a long time ago, you know, over 20 years ago. Uh, but I started going to trade shows uh, about two years ago. I was, uh, I was at the Las Vegas uh, Western Roofing Show. Uh, there was a, a North American Roofing Show up here in, in, in Montreal uh, about two years ago as well. Obviously, with COVID, that has affected things. As a matter of fact, right now in Vegas, there's a show, the IRE. I think today's yeah. the first day on it. I was considering to go there, but just with the travel and different things that are going on, uh, I didn't end up making it. But we've been at other shows. We've, we've had booths at, at a number of shows. Um, I will be at the um, the west at that Western Roofing Show in Las Vegas in September. And uh, same thing with the architect shows. We've been at a number of architect shows. And I'll tell you, I really love the especially the roofing shows. The people, the roofers that I meet at the roofing shows, I really get along with. They seem like really down to earth people. Obviously, they work hard. A lot of them do well, you know, with their businesses and uh, just down to earth people that I can relate to. So I really enjoy. That's one of the best aspects of this business, in my opinion, is the people that I've been interacting with. And I've been able to form some great relationships with people all over North America that are roofers. All right. Well, that's what's it. we're about done. You want to close it out, Elizabeth? Um, yes, of course. Before we close it out, I just want to add this one last picture on here, just for further details uh, for anybody that came in late and is watching. Yeah. But as everyone knows, we are coming to the end of it. If you want to contact um, Danny, you can do so by going to his website, envirospecinc.com. Or you can always give him a call. Um, I don't think we added the phone number there, but I'm just going to say it for the sake of it. 1-877-508-9816. And obviously, if you need any help or assistance with estimates or supplementing services, our team of experts is waiting to assist you. You can call or text 720-296-6618 or you can contact Jason at jason at furtadolaw.solutions. And that is it, gentlemen. Thank you both for being here, specifically Danny. Thank you so much for all of the great information that you shared with us. And um, if anyone has any questions, feel free to DM us or himself. Any closing words? That's great. That, thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed it, by the way. Yeah. We enjoyed having you here, too. So that's a wrap, guys. See y'all later. Y'all take care and see you here same time next Thursday.